eternal Father of mercy and compassion, blessed be your name. Indeed, we are truly thankful that you have given us this opportunity once more to look into your word and looking at what is happening around us. Pour your spirit upon us, give us understanding, we beseech you in Jesus' name. Amen. Signs of the Times, part 17. CBDC currents, end of freedom, end of paper money and cards, all to be under surveillance. I want to welcome you all in a special way to the Herald Report uh, edition. We are truly thankful that God has led us and God has been guiding us until now. To those who are joining us for the first time, I will encourage you to subscribe and also to go uh, to our YouTube channel and then you can see other signs of the times we, we, we have covered already. We have been covering quite a lot of them, but today we've got this special one, which we're looking at uh, end of freedom and also the change of currents and the surveillance system. So may the Lord bless you as you join us. And it is our prayer that uh, you benefit something from what we are discussing today. The Spiritual Prophecy in Testimony, Volume 5, page 753 says, We are standing on the threshold of a great and solemn event. My brothers and sisters, time is serious at the moment. Prophecy is fast fulfilling. The Lord is at the door. They is soon to open before us a period of overwhelming interest to all living. The controversies of the past are to be revived. New controversies will arise. Yes, exactly. We've already dealt with this before when we're talking about the controversy between Russia and NATO. In fact, we've clarified that last time that the controversy is actually between the United States of America and Russia. And this is a proxy war that is being fought by the real uh, countries which are fighting. It's Russia and uh, United States of America. It's unfortunate that... Uh, uh, Ukraine is caught in the middle. So what is happening in the world is actually very interesting at the moment. Say the sins of the to be enacted in our world are not yet even dreamed of. Satan is at work through human agencies, those who are making an effort to change the constitution and secure a law enforcing Sunday observance. Little realize what will be the result. A Christ is just upon us. Now, my brothers and sisters, this crisis which is just upon us is beginning to unfold now. We have covered uh, the way how the laws were changed during the COVID time. Remember, we dealt with this topic when we said no job, no church. And we looked at the way how the constitution were, constitutions were being changed to ensure that there will be control. And indeed, my brothers and sisters, all this is geared towards the National Sunday Law. But uh, the main aim... Now, there is something which is very interesting, which the devil is trying to do, is to ensure that we give homage unto the beast, and by giving homage to the beast, we'll be worshipping the devil. We are told in the book, Great Controversy, page 604, fearful is the issue of which, to which the world is to be brought. The powers of earth uniting to war against the commandments of God will decree that all, both small, great, rich, and poor, free and bond, shall conform to the customs of the church by the observance of false Sabbath. This is the ultimate goal, my brothers and sisters, and all that is happening today, the changes in the world, the changes in the constitution, that which seem to be as if it's an improvement, it's definitely geared towards ensuring that the children of God are forced to worship the beast on Sunday. They say all who refuse compliance will be visited with civil penalties and it will finally be declared that they are deserving of death. On the other hand, the law of God enjoying, enjoying the Creator's rest day demands obedience and threatens wrath against all who transgress its precepts. What actually that means is we are, will be threatened in the world by the penalties and civil laws. But however... The ultimate thing is that if we decided to obey the beast or to worship the beast, God, at the end of the day, he will punish all the disobedience. So we need to make a choice. What are we going to obey? Are we going to obey God or are we going to obey the laws of the land and worship the beast? The choice that we make will be very critical, my brothers and sisters. At the moment, the world is heading towards the end of freedom. 
The surveillance system is being set in place everywhere, my brothers and sisters. The power of buying and selling is being, remo is being monitored greatly. Uh, this issue of CDC started uh, quite a while ago. In 2021, I remember there is an article I was given by my friend, if my memory serves me right. And this was the beginning they were discussing about this. But however, now this thing is being implemented now. The central bank digital currency is being implemented. In fact, uh, there is a lot which is happening. We learn from this. I want to go to the International Monetary Fund. Uh, this was uh, on the February 9th, 9th of February 2022. Uh, this was by Krista Stalina Georgieva, who is the IMF director, managing director. Uh, she says regarding this uh, central bank digital currency. So today we aim to test our thinking again. We have moved beyond conceptual discussion on central uh, bank digital currency and we are now in the phase of experimentation. Now, central bank it says central banks are rolling up their sleeves and familiarizing themselves with the bits and bites of digital money. What actually that means is that uh, there is a plan and the plan is underway that all the paper money as we know it is going to be phased out. They've started doing it. There are countries which are championing this already, countries which have decided to, uh, to be there, uh, to champion these countries like Jamaica, countries like Bahamas, countries like China. This thing is moving so fast. But the question that which I'm very much interested in is why are they doing it and what is the advantage of this and what exactly will this entail? Now, she says, if the CBDC are designed prudently, they can potentially offer more resilience. So they talk of the advantage of using the CBDC money. Uh, it's more safety, greater availability, and low cost than uh, private forms of digital money. It sounds very true, and it sounds very good as well. You don't, we pay quite a lot if we're doing transactions these days. And with the CBDC, we'll, it seems as if we'll pay much less. And the transaction will be much quicker as well. Sometimes our transaction can take three days, especially if we're doing them intercontinental. It can take three days. It can take two days. It can take 24 hours. But with the CBDC, it can actually be, it's, it will be an instant transfer. So it will be very quick, very efficient so they say that is clearly the case when compared to unbanked and now this is actually say it's more safer when you are comparing to comparing it to cryptocurrency like bitcoin uh, it seems as if uh, there is a competition as well with cbdc uh, with uh, cryptocurrency like bitcoin so is it and even the better managed and regulated so this one will be better managed and regulated why because it's uh, controlled by the central bank so we are told that there is a lot of advantage in this and many countries are actually exploring it. Uh, this uh, over 100 countries are exploring and they are in different phases. So some are researching, some are testing, a uh, few already distributing CBDC uh, to the public. As I've said, countries like China, countries like Jam uh, uh, Jamaica, countries like Bahamas, uh, also in Sweden as well, they are very much advanced. Now, they, as I've said, there is a competition uh, between CBDC and all CBDC and also uh, cryptocurrencies uh, such as Bitcoin. Now, and uh, when you study what is happening in the USA, they feel actually they are threatened. So they are they are behind at the meantime, and they want to move slightly quicker so that they can catch up with those countries which seem to be ahead of them. And also, they want to remain right on top. So we learned this, uh, this was on the 17th of June, uh, 2022. It says, Fed's power, digital dollar could help uh, US, uh, US dollar maintain world's rev re reserve current status. So as for the USA, they want to remain on top. They want their currency to be used as a reserve. Today, U.S. dollar is used as a reserve currency in many countries. In fact, probably in the entire, uh, 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 in all the continents, in the entire world, we use the U.S. dollar. So now, listen to what it says. 
A U.S. Uh, central bank digital currency uh, could help maintain the U.S. dollar status as the world reserve currency. So basically to maintain uh, the U.S. dollar as a reserve world currency, we need to move to the CBDC. But I want, I'm, I want to look at what this uh, uh, person says. The next paragraph says, Looking forward, rapid changes are taking place in the global monetary system that may affect the international role of the dollar in the future. So now the international role of the dollar in the future. Why? Because right now, all countries are developing their CBDC. Therefore, the U.S. has to find something or better. They have to be on the forefront. But now they are actually trailing behind. So in other words, they need to catch up. So this seems to be coming very quickly also to the USA. And then it says, um, I'm going to the last sentence, uh, second from the last sentence. As uh, the Fed's white paper on this topic notes, a US uh, CBDC could also potentially help maintain the dollar's international standing. So if USA will remain on the top, they need to move very quickly to implement their CBDC. So we are actually looking, they are actually behind at the moment. Now, when you go to the next paragraph, it says the US is a step behind on CBDC, with 10 countries having already launched their own versions and another 15 in pilot stages. According to the Atlantic Council Central Bank Digital Currency Tracker, one of five countries representing over 95% of global GDP are exploring a CBDC, the tracker said. So in other words, there is a massive race for CBDC. There is a massive race for paperless money. There is a massive race so that uh, we can, the countries can catch up to this. I actually like uh, this paper. You know, this was also uh, published on the 4th of April 2022. This is also in Zimbabwe, right in the Southern Africa. They are actually doing the same. In Jamaica is the same. In China is the same. In America is the same. In England is the same. So what exactly is happening? There is a serious competition or there is a serious speed to ensure that this CBDC is implemented. But now there is a lot to talk about regarding this, but I, I, I've got something, with, I, I'm heading somewhere, so I want you to be patient, please, as we're heading somewhere with this, which is very interesting. But now, in England, they are going much further than this. Than, than this. 17th of May, uh, 2022, it says, wave goodbye to cards at the checkout that let you pay with a smile. Now, what exactly does that mean? It says, days of scrambling for a bank card could be over as MasterCard pilots new biometric payment system that use facial recognition software. So as for in England, very soon we will not go to the shops with cards. We will not go to the shops with uh, cash. I will just go into the shop walking. All I need is, uh, I just need myself, that's all, and my face, my eyes, and probably my fingers, and that's it. And then I can actually go and spend the money in the shop. It says, under new plans unveiled by MasterCard, customers will soon be able to pay by smiling or waving at checkout, meaning that the days of scrambling for a credit card or getting a lot of uh, debit card could soon be over. The payment company plans to roll out its biometric checkout program worldwide and make the technology available to both major and small retailers. So this will be worldwide. The speed is enormous to ensure that we are, we are done with cash, we are done with cards, we will only use our eyes, we only use our fingers. It says customers will be able to sign up for the program by confirming their identity through a mobile app. They will be asked to take a picture of their face or scan their fingerprint to register before adding a credit card that is then linked up to the biometric data. My brothers and sisters, this is the technology that are, they are using on their passports. And the whole world today is actually going to the digital passports, uh, to, the bio, to, to this uh, biometric passports. This is the technology they are using for the, uh, for the phones as well. So now it's moving into the banking system. But now listen to what it says here. It says, 
privacy experts have in the past warned against the use of biometric data because of the risk of the information being hacked and stolen. But however, the MasterCard have defended themselves, say that, you know what, this is actually much safer and this is actually a trusted. All what you need is yourself. Therefore, you reduce the risk of your money being stolen. But now, public has voiced their concern and I agree with the public. And this is where I, I actually want us to follow clearly. Listen to what somebody says. I've decided not to uh, put their names. This is uh, in the Telegraph. You can actually Google this. You can find it. it says, yet more evidence of the surveillance society that we are all sleeping, sleepwalking into. Facial recognition backed by our and cashless society will mean you have zero individual rights, no fundamental rights and zero privacy. That's what it means, my brothers and sisters. All our privacy is gone. All our rights are gone. There is no privacy in this. I cannot believe how the average person accept this or how ignorant they are. My brothers and sisters, when this thing is rolled up, it will not end there. These are steps towards a full surveillance. I'll prove that shortly. It says so now the other one says so now our fingerprints, face, and identity can be harvested by big tech as well as our shopping habits. Am I the only one who thinks this is creepy and intrusive? I'll stick to cash while it's available, although even that option is being gradually withdrawn by many businesses. I spoke to my colleague who is an, India, an Indian one day and we were talking and say I was having cards and he said, listen, a card is not money. What you need is cash. When you have cash, you have got money. My brothers and sisters, when we are being controlled, that we go to the shop by ourselves. And now we cannot hold money in our hands. We are in serious problems. We are in serious problems. Now, I want to, uh, uh, let, let me actually analyze what Anthony Pomblio uh, said in February uh, 22. Uh, this gentleman uh, deals with it, uh, the cryptocurrency and uh, he has got a following over 250,000 people. He writes every day in, in, in the paper. I found him, I find it very interesting and I actually agree with what he says. And also, uh, the spirit of prophecy in the Bible agrees with him. Now listen to what he say. Central bank digital currency remove the privacy and decentralized nature of physical cash. It creates an environment where central banks have complete control over every aspect of a citizen financial life. Is that not what they want to control us? And when they control us, they tell us what to do. They will tell us how to spend the money. They tell us when to spend and they tell us what to spend it on. This is a serious problem, my brothers and sisters. And then it says financial censorship. Once a central bank digital currency is in the hands of a population, the central bank has solidified complete control. They will no longer have to go to the court system to invoke emergency powers to tell you who you can transact with. This can all be implemented through remote digital technologies. Yes, before you know it, they will do whatever they want. Now we don't hold anything. They own our money. They also own us because they control everything. This is such a dangerous thing, my brothers and sisters. They say the central bankers will be able to see what is in your bank account. Yes, and then so what? They've always seen it, is it? Who you transact with, that's key. What you purchase, that's critical. And anything else they are curious about in your financial system. Yes, they can definitely do that. That full transparency with the state removes all elements of privacy while also giving the institution the ability to censure any and all transactions regardless of whether they have a legitimate reason or not. My brothers and sisters, we're not talking about the declaration of national Sunday law. We're not talking about uh, that no man who buy nor sell when there is a mark of, when, uh, unless the, he, he or she is a mark of the beast. This is a system of control. We need to submit to the demands of the papa of papacy. We need to submit to the demands of the beast. And my brothers and sisters, this system is already in place. Once we have accepted this system, then we are not far from accepting they will, they will bring anything 
above this system, on, on, uh, to aid on this system. Now, if you talk to the world today, I've actually read quite a lot of places and they're actually saying that, is this not what the mark of the beast is all about? Now, I will safely say to you that the mark of the beast is not this. The mark of the beast is national Sunday law, but the question is, they have to put the ground in place, the control measures to ensure that the mark of the beast will sit on something else. And this control on finance is definitely leading us into the mark of the beast, just like the, uh, the COVID policies, which were the policies, they are the policies of the mark of the beast. Same applies, this, this is the system, which is, I believe this is actually the final system to usher us into the control system and the implementation of the mark of the beast of the national Sunday law. Now we say the basic human rights is that we are all born free people. The creation of central bank digital currencies will completely eliminate that premises. Every human born will be starting off in the authoritarian state that requires them to be a digital slave to the central bank that has total control over their life. If you don't have the freedom to transact, you don't have freedom. My brothers and sisters, if we don't hold cash in our hands, if we don't have cash, and then we want to use digital currency. It's controlled. They tell us what to do. They can tell us where to spend it. They can monitor everything. And remember that uh, there may not be any more cards. It will just be facial recognition like what they are piloting in England. Facial recognition and hands. It actually means that you know what? While they can actually give a reason that, you know, this control terrorism, this control the way how money is spent. But my brothers and sisters, this is a serious, serious surveillance system. And it actually means our freedom has ended as paper money is ending as well. Now, we know that for sure in these last days, these programs are being championed by the king of the north. He has control over the world finance. And this is all about worship. We learn from the book of Daniel chapter 12 and verse 42 regarding the king of the north. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries and the land of Egypt shall not escape. Not only that, but he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver and over all the precious things of Egypt and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. My brothers and sisters, this is being launched all over the world. The beast who control. But however, we are told for sure that, you know, Edom will escape. The sons of Ammon will escape. Not everyone will be punished. Not everyone will experience this problem. But the question is, how are we going to escape? We have covered quite a lot of this as we're doing Daniel chapter 11, verse 40, 40 to 45. We are going to repeat it again uh, uh, on Friday and Sabbath in our seminar, uh, looking at the final events. We're going to touch quite a number of them. But now listen to what Revelation chapter 13, 16 say. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy nor sell save he that has a mark and the name of the beast or the number of his name. The issue will be on buying and selling. And the central digital, uh, central bank digital currency is all about buying and selling. And the one who controls the finances of the world is the Papa Rome, is the beast. My brothers and sisters, this is all in preparation for the mark of the beast. It's not about safety. It's not about moving with time. Yes, all those factors are being put in place, my brothers and sisters, but the real thing is there is something underneath. We are told in the spiritual prophecy uh, in uh, Review and Herald Extra, December 11, 1888, that 1888, that the Sunday movement is now making its way in darkness and the leaders are concealing the true issue. My brothers and sisters, this thing is moving in darkness and before we know it, the events will be very rapid. The implementation of the National Sunday will be very rapid. What we are facing at the moment is a very interesting thing. Things are so overwhelming. The, the world right now is actually facing a very serious time. But my brothers and sisters, 
Those who are pulling the strings, they know what they are doing. Say the leaders are concealing the true issue and many who unite in the movement do not themselves see whether the undercurrent is trending. They are working in blindness. But we as the children of God, we should not be blind. We should know for sure that you know the prince of darkness is in control and is in charge and everything is being prepared so that we can give homage to him. But blessed are those who take refuge in the word of God. This thing is to be fought. This thing is to be resisted. My brothers and sisters, where possible, let's protest. Where possible, let's live. Let's, let's not just go by the floor. Those things that look as if they are very good will only realize that we have been trapped in the system. But I want to go to the words of this gentleman who say, I'll continue to use cash until I cannot use it anymore. I prefer to use cash until I cannot use cash anymore. I would rather use that which I have. Remember, while the central bank digital currency will be implemented all over the world, there are places where it will not be possible. Blessed are those who will be able to escape because they've believed and they've trusted in the name of the Lord. May the Lord bless us and help us as we seriously consider what is happening in the world. But we have nothing to fear for the future unless we have forgotten the way how the Lord has led us in the past. All these things are happening us, are around us. But blessed are those who are grounded on the solid rock, which is Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? Loving Father of mercy and compassion, the signs of the times are fulfilling right around us. It's just a sign that you are on your way. And Lord Jesus, by thy grace and thy power, help us never to remove our hands on the plow, but to work, to preach, to live according to your will while we're waiting for your soon return. Lord, pour your spirit upon us and strengthen us to remain faithful and consistent. In Jesus' name, amen. And may the Lord truly bless you. I look forward to see you in the next edition as we'll be focusing on Daniel chapter 11. We'll remain on Daniel chapter 11 for the next two presentations as we look at what is happening and also giving a sum up of what we have covered and where we are in terms of time at the moment. Until then, may the Lord continue to bless you. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to write your comments if you have got any. And also you can contact us. May the Lord truly bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.